back here in studio. You are watching the Now Morning Show right here on TTT. Now, tomorrow is Republic Day, and we are so proud as Trinbegonians to celebrate that and to give us some key information on the holiday itself and what it really means. This morning with me is Sachin Duki, who is the University of the West Indies Economics Society and Faculty of Social Sciences uh, Guild Committee, PRO. All right, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us this morning, and uh, let's get right to it. Now, tomorrow we celebrate Republic Day, and, you know, sometimes it may be lost, especially to the younger ones, uh, the mm -hmm. difference between independence and republic. Could you briefly discuss that for us? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree that, that sometimes the lines are blurred between independence and republic, and younger people especially may not know the difference. So, the, first of all, independence day was, the, was declared in 1962, where Trinidad and Tobago became separate, separated from the Commonwealth. And but we remained a uh, part of the Commonwealth realm. We became, we were no longer directly under British rule, and we had our own prime minister and our own government system. But we were still part of the Commonwealth realm and had ties and relations with foreign institutions still operating in Trinidad and Tobago in the government rule. With the onset of Republic Day, which was declared in 1976, we officially abolished the end of a monarchy in Trinidad and Tobago, and reinstated uh, uh, our own head of the government. Of head of state, sorry, in the form of the office of the president of the republic, and this was important in creating our own fully independent national identity. So it it really celebrated the shift from from colonial rule into a more independent and more a, a greater national identity of Puerto Rico and Tobago with the, the declaration of the republic. So what really changed for us with republicanism status? Sorry, I, I didn't quite hear that. So what really changed for us with republicanism status? What changed was, the, the primary change would have been the replacement of the head of state. So Queen Elizabeth II was replaced by the by Sir Alice Clark, who was the governor general under Queen Elizabeth II, and he was declared the president of the Republic of Canada and Tobago. What this, what this meant in essence was that all the, the, the our governmental institutions, our national institutions would have changed and become restructured to be part of a republic with a new judicial system, a new form of government, and new new political a new a revised political system under the, the president. And our constitution would have been updated to to discuss the role of the different forms of of leadership. And I think the most important thing is that we became from subject of a ruler, the, the, the power like moved to the hands of the people where the government and, and the leaders were accountable to the people and ruled for, on behalf of the people representing their voice. And what, do you th what would you say is the responsibility of the people of Trinidad and Tobago since becoming a republic? Sorry, I, I didn't get the beginning of that. Sorry, uh, what, what, would you, what do you think is the responsibility of the people of Trinidad and Tobago since becoming a republic? I, I think definitely the responsibility of on the people of Trinidad and Tobago is to always carry a sense of national pride and to be aware and keep themselves educated about what it means to us to be a republic and how important that is in having a national identity and having a sense of, of independence, of being able to stand with pride and stand on our own and be known as the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, develop our own cultural identity, develop our new system and, and leadership rules and redefine what a country really means and not, not follow and adopt the system of, of the colonial powers, to leave behind our colonial past and forge new boundaries and new relationships and reposition ourselves in the, in the world and in the global market as an force to be reckoned with. Very well said, my friend. And Sachin, how do you think we can bring more awareness to the significance of this day and what it really means? Yeah, I, I definitely think that it's necessary to do this. And I think the most important, the most important way or most significant way we can do this is to, to introduce this into the education system. Yes, we do learn in primary schools and secondary schools briefly about about what is independence and what is Republic Day, but not much focus is really put on put on how this is important to the functions in society and 
really there's there's a lack of understanding and clarity as as the importance of the poverty and what how our life our daily life is affected because of what would have what would have happened in 1976 and throughout still becoming a republic so i think the education system could be restructured in that there's a greater sense of, of appreciation for what we have so so our citizens and so our youth and also i think on a more national level as well we could maybe uh, facilitate greater awareness programs and national celebrations with, in line with the, the institutions with, that would have been forged uh, coming out of Republic Day and the, the Republicanism status to have a greater sense of awareness and a greater sense of, of alignment to what it means to become a Republic, to become the Republic of Canada. Well, definitely. And, you know, what you're speaking to, there's the, the youth and, you know, uh, aside from awareness, the, the, the youth and the knowledge of the youth on what republicanism means. And uh, you said using education as sort of uh, the springboard to, to help push forward our republic agenda. Um, but, you know, in today's Trinidad and Tobago, we still see a lot of colonialism and things from colonial times entrenched in our culture. How do we even begin to break that down? Yes, I, I think that really comes from the, the tastes and preferences of citizens and of consumers and, and the, the, the trends that we tend to follow. But I think the, the most important way to change, have that shift in perception and shift in the behavioral the behaviors of citizens is to really foster a sense of, of Trinidad and Tobagonian identity, of Caribbean identity, and, and really make them not only aware but proud to be a, a, a a unique culture, a diverse culture within within the Caribbean itself, and also to, to maybe have a greater output of culturally unique uh, outputs from Trinidad and Tobago that puts us, that gives us alternatives to maybe the influences that we would so follow from from the colonial the colonial past. And well, and you know, Republic Day is definitely about that, and. Um I mean, taking from, taking from what we know and from what we learn, but doing things in such a way that helps push our country forward as the independent and republic uh, country that it is. Um, well, I want to thank you for that information today, and I want to uh, wish you a happy Republic Day. And uh, now we're going to continue with some information on Republic Day itself. So the first election as a republic was on the 1st of September, 1976. And... And it was proclaimed into law on the 1st of August in 1976, which is the day in law that Trinidad and Tobago became a republic. After that, a general election was held on September 13th, 1976, and the PNM won 24 of the 36 constituencies. And on the 24th of September, 1976, the first parliament of the republic was convened, and a public holiday was declared on that day and declared Republic Day to commemorate the first sitting of the first parliament of the republic. And you can continue with us on the program throughout the day to uh, get more information.